Um, thanks to Yuling giving a very uh, high level introduction about our different type of charts. Um, I'm continuing with like some hands-on with visualization in R. It will be like quite fundamental. Uh, and it's good that if you have the environment, environment set up. Um, so how many people has like put the Docker image and how many, okay, Docker image. Okay, how many people uh, have R Studio and the package installed? Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so, okay. Uh, today I'm going to focus on ggplot2. Um, ggplot2 is a popular visualization package in R. And the concept behind ggplot2 is you, you can define your uh, base plot, then add layer on top of it. So um, the common layers are like, OK, so firstly, you have your data and map it from data to your plot. Then after that, you can add like a geometric object, which is like what type of chart that you want to plot, and a scale transformation, and add some stats, stats summary to it. Uh, so for today's workshop, I'm going to use a um, package a collection of package called Teddyverse. It has uh, like ggplot2 in it and a, a bunch of other very convenient tools like deploy R or table, radar, um, tidy R. And that's like, so uh, R has its um, basic packages and the uh, Teddyverse is like one level on top of it. It, it gives a lot of convenience. Um, yeah, but today we are not going to focus on that. Uh, just use it for the plotting for ggplot2. And the data set that I'm going to use is uh, a data set, fr a TMDB data set from Cargo, which has uh, 5,000 5, uh, data information uh, in the data set. Cool. Uh, so let's jump to the R visualization hands on. So I have a I have a script here uh, and yeah it, it's a Git repository on the URL is this so if you have if if you if you are using R Studio native on your machine you can just pull this repo it's a R project you can just open the project file and if you are using um, the Docker image. Uh, if you manage, how many people manage to get to this um, web app running R Studio on on web? Can you share the password again? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. The password and username are R Studio, all lowercase. Mm. Yeah, so you put the Docker image, run the app, then yeah, just go to port 80, 87, 87. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you if you are using the Docker image, um, you can like pull this repo from the from the app. There is a terminal. I'll show you later. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's a terminal type here. Now you just do a git clone in, in it. So if, if, if you go to the terminal tab, this is the console, the R console, this is terminal. You just do a git clone, blah, blah. Then, yeah, that'd be there.
cool. Um, so all good. All right. Let's move to the uh, code. So if you if you go to check the um, files, if you have downloaded the uh, source code, it will show you. Uh, if you go to this folder, uh, R vi visualization WW code, there is a R project file. Just click on that. Uh, hmm. uh, okay, I already opened it, but if you haven't opened it, or click on that, then uh, there should be a window asking you whether you want to open the project. Just yes, then yeah, it's all set. This is the username and password for the for the Docker image, not the Docker image. The R running on Docker image. See the the other one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Let's move on. So uh, I, I'm just gonna like give a simple explanation about what's here in this project and uh, how we are going to uh, continue with the workshop. There is a data folder. Uh, in the data folder, it, it has two data sets. One is the TMDB data set, which we are going to use for the ggplot2. As well, we are going to uh, touch a little bit about one interactive uh, package called Plotly, which like allow user interaction. And the other data set is uh, Game of Thrones. Um, we are going to like analyze the network for the characters in the book. So, uh, firstly, I have two. Uh, I have two files here. One is the imdb.r. Uh, well, I was going to use imdb data, but I changed to tmdb data, so the name hasn't changed. Sorry about that. Um, this has the implementations of the workshop that, we're, like the, the exercise that we're, we're going to go through. And the other is an exercise file. It has the blanks here and there. So if you like, you can like follow me and type yourself. And we are going to an, uh, plot some simple charts, like the, the scatter charts and um, uh, like some, line, some box, box chart for uh, analyzing the relationship between the rating, runtime, and the release date uh, for different movies in the data side. And then after that, we are going to uh, separate in different genres and see like, what we can find there. Yeah, and after that, if we, we still have time, uh, we can plot the network for Game of Thrones characters. So, okay, so um, how many people has used R and R Studio before? Okay, cool, good. Um, so, the we're going we're going this file, going through this file line by line. Um, I'm sure that you know the shortcut for execute the current uh, line of code is command enter. So I'm just going to import some certain libraries that we are go going to use uh, later. Yeah. And if you can import all these libraries, meaning that you have installed package properly. So I think Jason, they have removed from the program, so now you cannot download. You might need to like go back to the previous version or something. 
Uh, sorry, Tidyverse is now available. Tidyverse. Tidy uh, yeah, I, I installed this in the Docker uh, container from GitHub. I, I'm using the dev tool to install it. I tried the previous version, but it's not compatible with the 3.4. So oh. besides Tidyjson, I was able to do everything. OK. Uh, Okay, so so you're like uh, you're installing using the dev tool and it, you can't do it. It's not available in the current. Like uh, you have to like install it like this. Uh, I tried. It's, it doesn't work now. Oh, so that this this doesn't work. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm using three point four point two. I don't know whether there's a difference about that. Um. Yeah. But okay. Um. So everyone can import the libraries? Uh, OK, uh, let me see. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah, right. So I'm using Tidyverse as well as deploy R. There are uh, some <laughs> similar, um, yeah. No, there's nothing. So if you see some error saying that there are like a uh, filter and some other function is already defined in another library, uh, it's just a warning, it's fine. Uh, it's the, like some conflict between the Tidyverse and DeepLayR because DeepLayR is part of Tidyverse. Um, but I imp imported, so the order actually matters. You, you need to import Tidyverse first, then I want to use some of the de like deploy R functions, so I import later after that. For, for this too, yes, because like, for yeah, for this too. Yeah. The others are, there are individuals, so it's fine. And then, because I have the data set already uh, in the data folder, I'm going to re read the CSV file. Uh, yeah. Read CSV, uh, re read all the movies in, in two objects. And if I uh, just run it. So if you run it, you'll see some warning message saying there are some problems about reading the data. It's because the data is now clean. It has some non values in it. We are going to clean it up a little bit later. So it's just a warning. You don't need to worry about it. And um, if, 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 you, if you type call names movies, it will give you all the, type, like all, all the names of the columns in the movie object. You should be able to see. So if you call call names, you should see that budget, gen uh, generous, homepage, and stuff like that. And then, um, so I want to use the rating data from the user. Um, okay, everything is all right. You install. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you can't, like, if you, well, you, you probably can't. <laughs> um, where is it? Let me find it. Yeah, so uh, tidy JSON is not part of the uh, our native package. You have to install from the Git, uh, GitHub repo, and but but like before that, you have to install the dev tools. Uh, if you have dev tools, you you call you install GitHub and give this name to it. It should be able to to do that.
Okay. So I'm just going to rename uh, vote average in the column to rating because it's easy to type and rating is just like more common things to call. Uh, so in line eight, I'm going to rename the column. Then I'm going to call the call names again and see whether the change actually happens. And uh, yes, uh, here it's actually call rating. Um, and then this is a very small change to the data set. Um, if you execute this, this line, it's removing um, the, the noun data for release date. Um, and if you, you're using head, you can see uh, what's the first uh, observation. Uh -huh. This one, the tiny Tidy JSON. Uh, it is because later, because the data that gives the gener as a as a JSON object, I yeah, I need to like gather it and trans transform it to a longer table. Uh, I am using it to data transformation. It's not very relevant to the um, visualization in, for the purpose of this. Yeah, it's just to transform for we can use the gener properly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because the data set is actually providing several data in the JSON format. Like, uh, because one movies can, well, one movie can have different genres, so it like it's you know JSON as well as the keyword and uh, like directors, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Filter is from DeepLayer. Uh, it's from the DeepLayer library. Um, yeah, but I mean like your filter condition. Oh, the filter condition is saying that, uh, okay, uh, yeah, so this, this, this uh, percentage greater than percentage sign is to, is, is a pep. It peps the output of the, priv of the things on the left to the, uh, as a first argument to the next function. So it's actually saying that filter movies, movies, and if the release date column of movies is not now, then keep it. So yeah, so it's filtering out uh, re which observation with the release date as now. So NA stands for? NA is an, not available, yeah. Yeah, so uh, head is just to check the, like, the first several uh, observations in your, in your table. And the theme is dimension. Um, you can see the dimension of the movies is like, it has 4,802 observations with 20 columns for each record. And then it's the first chart that we are going to plot together. Um, so if you remember um, the command for checking the column names for the movies, uh, and let me just do it. Column names, movies. I'll show you what columns are available there. Uh, now I'm going to plot the relation between ratings and runtime. So. Um, I, I already uh, imported the library tidyverse. It has ggplot too, so we can just use it freely. So if I say ggplot, um, it will ask me for some argument. Uh, so, so in R, you can just see, you can like say data equals to something, or you can just ignore the variable name. Just say. Um, Okay, that, so here I'm going to use the full name. Uh, data equals to movies. Then I'm going to define X and Y. Um, this is the like my, mapping your data to chart part, if you remember in, in the slide. So AES uh, stands for um, aesthetics. So if you give it AES and say X equals to um, Rate x equals to what I'm plotting. Run runtime, and y equals to rating. Those are the columns 
column names in the movie that I said because you have this you have defined the data here so you don't have to um, you don't have to use the R syntax saying movies uh, dollar sign you can still use it but um, you don't have like you don't have to it's the same and this is the base plot of ggplot2 if you just tap this and do and execute this line. Nothing will happen. Yeah, you can see the chart here. Nothing will show up because you haven't defined what kind of plot that you want to add to add to the base plot. This is another layer that we are going to add to it. Um, the syntax is plus um, G E O M. I'm going to plot the uh, scatter chart. It's point. And if you do command out again, something shows up. And if you if you click on zoom, it will like give you a bigger window to let you see what's going on there. Yeah. And as I said, this is ggplot2. It's not very interactive. You can see the plot, but you don't know like what what's exactly happening. So there is a very s simple and simple and like um, well sweet way to do to convert ggplot2 to, to a interactive plotly uh, chart is just to assign the ggplot to a variable. Uh, I'm going to say okay plot equals to so the shortcut option minus um, mac is to type the the arrow thing. Yeah. I assign it to a variable, then say ggplotly, and pass the variable to it. And if you rerun these two lines here, Okay, um, yeah, I have a tidy, oh, sorry, I got the wrong line. Um, not here, we are somewhere above. Ah, uh, yeah, here, so I, gg plotly p, and the rerun these two lines. And if you click on this, it will, sh it will show the uh, plot in a in a browser. And now you can see it's like when when you hover your mouse on it, it, it will show you the x and y you defined. Yeah. That's one way to convert uh, ggplot to to plotly chart. Uh, okay, let's continue. So just now we have the. We have the chart here, and we can see there are like some of the points uh, have doesn't have run t doesn't have a length, and sh some of the po some of the movies have like zero rating or ten or rating of ten ten points. So let's clean it up. Um, okay, so if you go to here, we are going to create object called Teddy Movies, and it's basically pipe the whole movie set to filter out the time. I'm only cur I'm only um, interested in the movies like have well at least we'll have some runtime uh, and uh, less than four hours. Yeah. So I believe this point and all these points will be gone. And now if I pl uh, plot it again Cool. So you see, there's like the, the the points lying here and there. They are gone now. Um, yeah, and I also changed the color of the plot to blue. So, yeah, but uh, so if we look closely at the chart here, we can still see some of the things uh, having zero points or ten points rating. Um, but before that, let's plot a bar chart to 
see like how many people actually vote for that. If nobody votes for the, those movies and they still have some ratings, we just get rid of it. It doesn't mean anything. Um, so I'm I'm going to use the uh, Teddy movies and plot a bar chart here. So as we can see, that um, the the y-axis is the voting count, and the x-axis is this rating. Nobody actually votes for like movies below 2.5 and over 9, so we are just going to filter that out. Um, here is a second exercise uh, to filter out the movies that doesn't um, have a rating which makes sense. I, I, I give you like a couple minutes you try maybe try to do it yourself. Um, pretty similar to, to the runtime you can refer to the code above. Yeah, so after that, if you plot again, you should be able to see, um, well, there's at least no, uh, no outliers lying on this four edges. Okay, now uh, we're moving on to something a little bit more um, complicated. So now we have some charts ha uh, which describe the relation of rating and uh, runtime. What about I uh, add another dimension to it as um, the release date, so we can see how the trend is going over the over the years. So um, if you if you check this piece of code, so it's basically have the same. Um, it, it has it has a similar base plot, but x axis as here is release date, which is another column in the movie's data set, and y is rating. And uh, I'm going to plot the, um, I'm going to use the scatter plot again, um, but I'm defining the colors, um, I'm, I'm associating the colors with runtime, which is the third dimension. And add another scale layer to say, okay, so I have color associated with dimension, and I want the low end of 
Like I, I want the movies with the shorter time shows as yellow, and the movies with uh, long long run time shows as red, and uh, also change the uh, X axis label to it and add some title. Um, then let's if let's run it, you can see a plot like this. Yep. So, um, okay. So as you can see, the X exercise is release date that's from uh, somewhere around 1920 to um, 2017, I believe. And the rating is something like this, and the color is indicating the runtime. Um, there's like, uh, so we we can see that, that there are more movies uh, made in the recent years, and because of the data. The number of of movies are increasing, so the the rate the range of ratings are increasing too. Um, the colors are sort of mixed with each other, so we can't really tell much about the like from the color here. Um, but it's okay. We we can plot like we can try to um, plot like an, with the the other demand. Uh, we, we can uh, rotate the runtime and the release date and. Uh, rating dimension and plot another chart. Uh, so, okay, the next exercise is to uh, plot the same color scale uh, scatter um, plot with uh, Y as runtime, X as release date, and uh, color scale over rating. And let's see what the chart looks like. And if you, if you want to like see uh, what 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 the code is uh, is like, you can always check at the mdb.r file to see what the implementation looks like. Okay, so in in this chart, well, we we can see a little bit of like the color difference um, of the red and the yellow. And there's more yellow at the uh, bottom corner here, but um, we can we can see there's there's something there, but we don't know like what movies or what's at the actual length of this yellow dot. So let's convert it to um, ggplotly. And check what what are actually those yellow dots represents. Okay, plot.
Yeah, so after converting it to a plotly, we can see that this yellow dots here are um, well around like 90 from from 80 80 to 100 minutes. Um, so we can sort of tell that uh, in recent years, the, there are a lot of movies around 19 minutes doesn't have a very good rating. And for Plotly, if you select a certain area, it, you can zoom into that certain area um, there to, to see uh, more details about that, of, of, of the points. And the double click is go back to the original um, chart. And then, okay, so now we know that, like, that we know, because uh, ggplotly is taking the variables that you defined in ggplot2 and show it as, as a, a tooltip there. So it shows you the rating, the release date, and the runtime. But if we want to know, like, okay, what movie is it? What's the title of the movie? We can um, do this. We can, we can actually use plotly to do that. So I'm going to plot a, pl uh, get a plotly chart. It's plot underscore li. Then you define the data here. So in plotly, you use uh, tilde to, uh, to, to say that is the dependency variable. So, uh, okay, dependency variable data is tidy movies. X is release date Y is runtime and we want to show text as title. Um, tilde is the uh, dependency, uh, it, it indicated that this variable is a dependency of your data set. Yeah. Got the tilde here. Okay, so now you can see the like title is printed there, as well as the release date. Yep. Okay, so that is about like some play around with the runtime and release date and the ratings. Now let's look closely to the, uh, to the genres of the movies. So before that, I want to check what kind of data is in the movie set. Uh, so if I, just, if I just call head and uh, query the first ob observations genre, I can see what it is. So it shows me it, it's like a, a stringified JSON uh, and for the first movie, it it's it has three genres associated with it. One is action, one is adventure, one is a uh, sci-fi. So we need to do a little bit uh, data transformation to 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 convert this JSON uh, to the format that we can use. That's when um, the tidy JSON comes into the picture. Um, uh, I'm not going to too much details about how this converted, but the data that uh, converted to is, for example, the first record has three uh, genders with it. If you just uh, gather it and have, for example, three different records with the other columns with the same value and the gen genres with different value. So if I run this line and I query the first three records of a uh, movie by gender object, you can see it's uh, translated to three records and it's as a string format. Okay, so now we have 
we have our uh, data with the proper general information. The next I'm going to do is to uh, have a box plot for ratings versus genres, um, basically to see the ratings um, based, based on each genre. So ggplot2, um, the same, we, but th at this time we use movie by genre. And we define x AES um, X is genre, Y is rating. This is our base plot. After that, we define the geomet geometric object GEOM box. And uh, yeah. Uh, it's confined function. <coughs> okay, it's a box plot. So now we have the box, a box plot based on each uh, genre. But then um, it's a little bit hard to see as the text down here are like overlapping with each other. Uh, in our studio, I think if you, if you zoom more in, you can see it. But um, let's just make it more uh, colorful and more um, different between each genre. So in the uh, box plot, I can define my own style. And if I say, okay, fill with genre and run it again, I will show some color. And yeah, it's more clear which one is which one. And I ha will uh, have the indicators here. So this is a uh, box plot. And as uh, Yulin just introduced the um, what this bar, uh, what is this chart mean? Uh, so this is uh, 50 percent percentile, and uh, this is 75 percent, 25 percent, and this is the mean value, and the, this is the max value. And the dots here and there are the outliers in the in the data set. Um, so if we don't want to show the outliers here, um, we can define it in the box plot saying okay an um, outlier dot shape equals to an a then we plot it again now the dots are gone yeah and we can see that uh, well, horror, horror movies doesn't really have a very good rating um, over all these years. Uh, this, uh, this is what TV movies doesn't really have a good rating uh, compared with other genre. This um, documentary has like a good rating overall. Yeah. But then, like before coming to any conclusion, uh, because we know that some of the movies are more popular than the others, right? Like drama actions are more popular than, that there are more amounts of those movies um, compared with, for example, uh, documentary. So we, we also like want to see, okay, what's the, what's the frequency for each genre? Uh, how many, like, what was the difference of the amount of movies um, produced from 1920 to recent years? So the next line, I'm going to gen generate the frequency and use ggplot2. Okay, this is a to-do, but I already has the answer here. Um, <laughs> so, okay, yeah. You just fit the frequencies in and get a bar chart. Well, it's not quite obvious here. Let me do it 
in the art studio. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, now it's better. So obviously drama has a lot of movies and documentaries documentaries compared with drama is like not very much foreign movies no uh, tv movies is even, even fewer yep so all this chart uh, if you if you want to convert it to interactive plot you can always assign it to a variable and pass it to ggplotly and you can see the numbers uh, i'm going to and uh, convert the box the box hmm. the box plot to ggplot2 where is it <coughs> wrong 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 here sorry yeah so <coughs> yeah, and now you can see the numbers um, indicating like different ratings for each gender. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, ggplotly doesn't handle everything, so it can't interpret that uh, we are hiding the uh, outliers, so it's showing up. <laughs> Can you orient the x view a little bit? Sorry? The uh, labels on the x-axis. The labels on... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's overlapping so much. Mm. Yeah, so if you decrease the size, uh, yeah, then the, sh the show. Yeah, or if you have a bigger screen. <laughs> there are options to make it uh, vertical also. Like there is an argument which you change the value from 1 to 2, then it has horizontal and vertical. Uh, yeah, sure. yeah, I think, I think you can do that too. Yeah, but I'm not sure how to convert it to vertical. Uh, yeah, I don't remember even the argument, what exactly they did. Huh, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that there is a way that you can define it in your aesthetics yeah. to, for example, now the text is too long, that you can yeah, make it I vertical. Value one or two, you change it to two or something, you change to vertical. Sure, yeah. Um, I, I, I forgot the syntax. You can always Google it. And yeah, okay, so one tip. Uh, so if you, if you want to check something, you can always, in the console, you can type the question mark. And if you say, uh, G E O M box plot. It will show the help for it, for that function. Yeah, you can always check things from here too. Okay. Uh, yeah, back here. Okay. Can can is it too small the font? Okay. All right. Mm. So uh, we plot the bar chart here, and then um, let's plot something. Um, okay, so I'm interested in, for example, um, action movies. So I'm just going to uh, filter out the movie set which represents uh, based on gender, and like only have a subset of movies uh, of action movies. And I'm going to plot the ratings over release date for action movies and see how it's going over the years. Okay. Okay. So this is about action movies. I add another smoother to it. Um, so that the gray things here is representing the um, uh, standard error. Um, so, but 
It doesn't speak too much is because like recently we have so many more movies than uh, early years, so the, the the standard area is smaller. Um, yeah, but you still can see the trend is um, uh, generally not as good as before. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to compare uh, st compare three genres: one is action and sci-fi and animation. And I'm going to plot the budget over these three genres of movies. So the same filter function. I'm going to filter out the th three sub subcategories: the um, plotted. And there is another layer that you can add to ggplot2. It's called a facet grid. Uh, so basically, if you if you don't have this layer, okay. Uh, okay. So if you don't have this layer, it will plot it all in the same chart. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I plotted in different colors based on gender. And if you use facet grid, it will plot three uh, uh, different small chart and compare with them like side by side. Yeah. The scale are the same for the three charts. And this, so I'm saying that I'm plotting the facet grid um, based on genre, and um, this tilde here is also indicating the, the variable dependencies, and the dot here is a, just a shorthand for the variables that you have uh, in the ggplot2 before you plot it to the to to a facet grid. So if I reverse it, I'm saying okay, let's. Um, use all the variables before that and um, have a dependency of genre. It, it will look, look like this. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and again, that you can use um, GG, uh, you can use Plotly to do that. Similarly, I'm giving the data, then I'm saying, okay, x equals to tilde um, release date, y equals to tilde um, budget, and text equals to title. Color depends on genre. Ah, plotly. Sorry, typo. Yeah, there is a couple of things that you can define, uh, like the um, trace and the marker. And you don't define it; we just like go to the default. But Plotly will show you like some warning message saying, "Okay, that I'm using the default." Um, yeah. Okay. Now I can see that uh, this is the like most expensive movies uh, over all the three categories. It's three hundred eighty million, and um, Avengers also expensive. And another Paris of the Caribbean, Superman Returns. So it's a lot of like superhero movies, isn't it? <laughs> cool. So that's uh, that's about ggplot2 and a little bit about Plotly. I have three exercises down here on um, for for you to do in the end of this workshop. Um, yeah, so uh, I give you like 
10 minutes to do it, and then let me know if you have any problems. Then we continue with the Game of Thrones network.
Okay, so have we all get it? What's the name of the most popular movies um, across drama and action? Okay, so um, there are more libraries in R that you can use for uh, plotting, and there are like several interesting interactive libraries that I um, want to introduce. One is the Viz Network. It's, as the name says, it's visualization network. Basically, it's plotting for the plotting for, for uh, net network relations. And the leaflet is mostly used for uh, maps to show different uh, information based on the geolocations. And yes, Plotly is one of the popular general purpose library. And the Shining is a framework for uh, exporting your um, interactive plotting tool to a web app. So. Um, the, the good thing about Plotly is it uh, works perfectly fine with Shiny. You can just uh, use Plotly to generate the app and do some, s s to generate the graphs and use Shiny to export it to a web app. Um, so now I'm going to use uh, Viz Network to show something about Game of Thrones. I also, uh, I, I, I also use a data set called Game of Thrones from Kaggle. Um, if you go back to the R st studio, there is a script called GOT Night. Uh, okay, so we import the libraries, Tidyverse and Vsnet. And uh, so Vsnet requires your data set to be in a, di di uh, in a certain form. Um, it requires the nodes and the edges. So if we have a close look at what the data looks like, you can type view. Um, after, after importing the CSV, just view uh, nodes. Um, maybe the first three column, uh, the, the, the first three observation. Okay, well, the third, sorry, and this is wrong. First three. Ah. Yeah. And it has a name and some attributes to the node uh, culture and known house in Game of Thrones. Um, Labels, titles, and uh, uh, superculture. That's some information about the node. And then if we take a look at the edges, it has, it, 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 it has to have uh, a column called source and target. It's uh, basically con connecting describing the 
uh, relation to connect the node. So, um, yeah, so we get the edges and node, and we did some, we, we do some cleanup, and I'm going to add two of the uh, icons for two of the characters in the Game of Thrones. Um, you ha so, so this network only allow you to use the photos from, from, uh, from the internet. Um, so I don't have a server to serve all the images for each character. I'm just going to change two of them. One is Jon Snow, one is Daenerys, Daenerys Targaryen. Uh, yep, so it's column image that you, you just uh, put the value in the image column for a certain node. And uh, then call the function vs network, fit in the nodes, node and edges that you processed, uh, and the pipe it to uh, this node sh shape properties. So I want to I want to use the image with border. So I'm going to define um, it to be true and pipe it to the um, I graph layout. So I graph layout will, uh, it has some algorithm to um, put the node um, in a certain order. I don't know what, what algorithm is follows, but it basically gave you a nice shape of the, net, of the network. And if you open it on a browser, and I give it to, like I give the two icons of these two guys, a guy and a girl. Yeah. And if I click on it, like, you can see what are the edges and what are the snows. It has a name. Um, yeah. You definitely can do more with uh, this net network. Uh, this is like just a, a 101 to show what, what it looks like. Cool. So that's that's about it. That's about today's workshop. Um, hope you learned something and you enjoyed it. Um, okay, I'm going to pass it to Yuling.